Hello everyone. In this video, I will be showing you how to replace a power jack on a Dell motherboard using my Hot Air Rework Station. Now using Hot Air is going to make this job a lot easier as opposed to using a regular soldering iron. Because this particular jack, these Dell power jacks, have nine leads that go through the board. A difficult job to do with just a soldering iron. Now, after I've heated up this board a little bit, the first thing I'm going to do, as I always do, is use flux. Remember, as I said in previous videos, flux is your best friend in these situations. Notice that I have also taped off with heat-resistant tape around the area that I'm applying the heat for the power jack. This will prevent me from melting the solder on other components that are immediately around this area. I am also using a smaller nozzle on my wand to concentrate the heat in a small area. Now here's a closer look at the jack that I'm going to be removing and replacing on this board. This is one of the more difficult power jack jobs. Like as I said earlier, this Dell power jack has nine feet or nine leads that go through the board that need to be desoldered. So starting off, I have my wand temperature set to 350 degrees, and I have an airflow of about 5. Now I have this board slightly elevated with a pair of pliers, the idea being that when this solder melts off this old power jack, the jack will just have room to fall down on the surface, then I can just move it out of the way. Here's the new power jack. Now I had some initial thinking that I was going to be able just to, once this old jack falls out, that I'll be able to just take these pliers and place this new power jack into the holes provided. Mm, that turned out not to be such a good idea. I came up with a much, much better solution using a what's called a drill press vise. And I will uh, expand more on that as this video goes on. Now I'm not saying the way I'm doing this is the best way to do it. Every tech has his own techniques. But this way, this worked for me, so I'll tell you later on how I uh, used a vise to help me out. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go ahead and probably get a little hotter here. I'm going to turn my wand up to 450 degrees. And I'll just bump my uh, air flow up a little slightly, maybe like up to 7. Um, now, you may be tempted to take a pair of pliers again and start pulling on this power jack while you're heating it up. I, you know, it's really unnecessary. That's why I have a gap that's below the board, below the power jack. So when this solder melts, it will literally fall right off, as you'll see here shortly. Okay, I'm also going to bring my wand in a little closer to the board, maybe about two inches off the board, one and a half to two inches off the board. We can now start to see uh, our flux start to run, and we're also getting a little bit of a change in color in in the uh, solder itself around around the leads. Now you could also, if you'd like to try to use a solder sucker, some techs use a solder sucker at this point to try to uh, suck the uh, solder off the leads, but in this case um, it won't be necessary. As you'll see here, this power jack will just fall right off the board. And there we go. All right, now board's still hot. Let's move on to the vise that we're going to use to put this new power jack on. This is called a drill press vise. You can find it at any hardware store or Home Depot. Uh, got mine from Harbor Freight, pretty cheap, like eight bucks. It's flat and it's heavy. And I use two rubber pieces on each feet of this vise so I don't damage any parts of the board. Remember, we're gonna stand the board up with this vise but we're not going to apply major pressure. This is just to offer support to stay in the board up, and we use the rubber to keep from damaging any components on the board. So I'll go ahead here and get my vise into position. And whatever is the most comfortable position for you, uh, is, right now um, I have the board set to where the jack is 
going to be soldered on towards the bottom so it just was a much easier for me to to work with that way so what we're looking at now is the is the top part of the board and here's my new power jack that I'm going to just kind of put on top of the holes there um, and what I'm doing right now is I, I'm applying the heat on the back side of the board you can't really see but behind the board I have my hot air wand and I'm kind of slowly going in circles about two inches away from the board remember my board is still somewhat hot from the desoldering so that's going to help me a lot so you don't really have to apply a lot of force here you just have to kind of hold it steady once that solder moltens this power jack will just kind of slide into place so it shouldn't take any more than a couple of minutes since the board is still warm and you will notice here in the video if you can tell when this power jack just kind of eases right on in I'm not putting any pressure on it and just kind of holding it in place and there it went okay from this point we can remove the heat what we want to do now is we want to be sure that this power jack is flush front and back with the board we don't want any gaps that way we know that we're going to have good contacts when we touch it up with fresh solder so we'll just go ahead and remove the board carefully remove the board from the vise and we'll check here to be sure we're good and flush front side here that's looking nice and flush as we you can see all right and we'll flip it over here and we'll get a backside view to be sure that the backside is nice and flush so that's nice and flush there too at this point in time it is time to add some fresh solder okay so we want to kind of clean our area up with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to get rid of that old flux remove the heat resistant tape I do feel at this point it's really important that we just get our voltmeter here and test for continuity we want to be triple sure that there's no positive post touching any negatives we do not want to add power to this board if that's the case so once again we'll go ahead and after that after we confirm that we can touch it up with some fresh solder and I would test for continuity again just to make triple sure the job was done correctly okay everyone uh, if you like what you see here hit the like button and also keep subscribing to my videos I have much more computer repair videos coming up here in the future with a lot more better quality so until next time everyone see you later